welcome to Best Take. I'm your host, Tiffany Rush. Best Take features film and video work created by students enrolled in Maricopa Community Colleges. Television studio production is a class where students learn to produce a basic talk show at the film school at Scottsdale Community College. By videotaping an interview with the host and guest, students learn camera operation, sound design, directing, and graphics. A recent edition of Saguaro Spotlight featured Dr. Mark Stieg, a member of the Scottsdale Charros. The name Charros, meaning gentleman riders, is in keeping with the Western theme of the organization. This philanthropic organization has been around for over 50 years, helping the community by funding scholarships for both students and teachers. One of their fundraising events is in connection with the San Francisco Giants spring training and provides lots of family fun. Let's watch. Hello and welcome to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm Garna Mejia. Joining us today is Dr. Mark Stieg. He's a longtime Valley resident, he's an orthodontist, and he's also a Scottsdale Charo. We'll find out about that in a second. Dr. Stieg, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Garna. It's happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, Dr. Stieg, the Scottsdale Charos are an organization that has been in the Valley for several years. They have a rich history and legacy here. Can you tell us a little bit more about them and how you got involved with them? Yeah, uh, Garna, the Scottsdale Charos have been around actually for about 50 years. Um, and uh, they started out as some business leaders that uh, wanted to do something within the community to help the community and um, kind of a philanthropic group, if you will. And uh, being a member of the Charos is by invitation only. And uh, gosh, probably oh, 15 plus years ago, um, I was invited and accepted and it's been really one of the uh, wonderful parts of my life. It's, it's really been great. What are some of the values that they cherish or you know, what's, what's their motto? Well, the Charles kind of started out as this little, sort of little Western group, you know, <laughs> and um, I think, uh, you know, that's near and dear to most us Arizonans, you know, we love our Western heritage and uh, the Charos embraced that. And part of, you know, the what the West was built on was this culture of depending on each other and helping each other. And uh, I think the Charos embraced that and used that to help, uh, you know, do good things within the city. Why, why did they want to be called the Scottsdale Charos? You know, I have no idea. That's a great <laughs> question. Charos are gentlemen writers. In Spanish, in the Spanish. word Charo is, yep. That's it's exactly right, here. and uh, so uh, I think, uh, you know, it kind of fits us. We still have uh, an annual trail ride each year on horseback where we go to different places in Arizona and enjoy the, the scenery and the beauty of that area, have the camaraderie with each other, get to know each other. Uh, we invite guests each year, and uh, some of those guests eventually become members and uh, help us uh, fulfill our mission of helping uh, uh, people here in in the great city of Scottsdale. But I know that you guys aren't just you know worried about having fun and hanging out and being cowboys or charros together. You're also really involved in lots of organizations and activities here in the valley. Um, for example, you uh, the Scottsdale Charros sponsor a scholarship for Scottsdale Community College. Can you tell me a little bit about that scholarship and how it kind of came about? Oh, that's a great question. Um, one of our members, Arthur Decabooter, Dr. Arthur Decabooter, was the president of SCC for over 20 years. Yes. And a really great man. Um, uh, and uh, the Charles decided to endow a scholarship in his name uh, for an SCC student each year. And uh, we also do that with other uh, areas of uh, education uh, with uh, Scottsdale Unified School District. Uh, specifically, we have uh, scholarships for students within the district that they can apply for, our, f our future teacher scholarship. Um, we also have scholarships for uh, uh, teachers within SUSD to go get their master's degree to help elevate themselves 
within the district and help benefit the kids in their classrooms, which we think is a very important part of the community. Having a strong education system helps a community, helps make a community stronger. And uh, the Charos are all about that. We uh, are big in education. And um, from SCC and Scottsdale uh, School District, uh, both, we, uh, we, put our, uh, we put a lot of resources into those, uh, into those programs. And you guys aren't you know, out there. It's not like people hear about Scott, the Scottsdale Charos. I mean, they might hear about El Charo, the restaurant, but they don't hear about Scottsdale Charos. You guys are kind of, in my opinion, a little bit behind the scenes. You do a lot, but it's always, you know, you're not out there to get glory and fame. Um, if there was one thing that you want, you know, the public to kind of know about the Scottsdale Charles, what would that be? What do you want them to know you guys as? Well, you know, it's kind of the cowboy way to kind of uh, quietly go about your business. And um, the Charles very much emulate that. We are happy to be behind the scenes uh, helping the community in any way that we can. Um, I think that uh, the legacy of the Charos uh, in, in helping Scottsdale is, uh, has been fantastic. Uh, we've done things to help support not only education as we discussed before, but also help with uh, you know, uh, renovations on uh, ball fields within the city, especially along uh, the Indian Bend Wash and the Greenbelt area. Uh, we've also helped with um, uh, various other things uh, within the community and one of the things that I think is really terrific is uh, most recently the Western Heritage Museum which uh, has just opened in Scottsdale. The Charles were major contributors to that. Uh, once again it's an educational opportunity for all ages and is a really a wonderful, wonderful place to go visit. Thank you so much Dr. Stieg. We have a break that we have coming right up but when we get back, we're gonna find out a little bit more about the activities that they're involved in and how it is that they go about fundraising. We'll also find out how Dr. Stieg, um, actually the why of why he is involved in this and what he gets out of this personally. When we come back to Saguaro Spotlight. Welcome back to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm Garna Mejia. Before the break, we got to meet Dr. Mark Stieg, and he's a Scottsdale Charo. He just told us a little bit about it, and we're gonna find out a little bit more about what it is that you guys um, do to fundraise, to get the funds so that you can go out there and help your community. Um, Dr. Stieg, what, is, what are some of the activities that you guys sponsor? Garner, our major activity is spring training baseball there at Scottsdale Stadium. Uh, we have an agreement with the San Francisco Giants and the city of Scottsdale to help organize and in some aspects run spring training. And for that we have uh, certain advertising uh, that we sell and ticket sales for VIP areas and such. And uh, from those uh, proceeds we uh, raise money that we can then uh, give back to the community in the forms of various charities that we support. And I know we have a video so we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Um, and it kind of explains a little bit. I think it's so fun that you can raise money and have fun and people can like donate to a good cause and have fun. Like, it's, it's great. great. Yeah. And family friendly. I love it. <laughs> this is Scottsdale Stadium. This is spring training baseball. 
this is America's pastime, and the experience is off the chart awesome. Major League Baseball Spring Training is where championship dreams begin for the players. But for the Valley, it means millions for our local economy and benefits that last well beyond the spring season. Steeped in tradition, historic Scottsdale Stadium is the spring training home of the San Francisco Giants. And thanks to more than 160,000 fans that come to the turnstiles every March, the Scottsdale Charos are able to raise millions of dollars for local charitable and civic organizations that target youth sport and education causes. But we can't do it without you. Your support of the Charos during spring training is truly appreciated. And there are lots of ways you can get involved. The Charos kick off the spring training season with the first pitch event, a high-energy dinner dance and auction held in downtown Scottsdale. This popular event draws more than a thousand people for a night of Western-themed fun that gets it all started. Once the games begin, the Charos offer exclusive in-stadium advertising and promotional opportunities throughout the spring training season designed to grow your business. The Charos also offer the crown jewel of the spring training experience, the Charo Lodge. Located just above the outfield on the first baseline, the Lodge provides the best seats in the house during the season. Available for individual or group sales, the Charo Lodge offers an all-inclusive price. You get your game ticket and entrance to the Lodge, and it's clearly the place to be. So if you're looking to promote your company or just want to have some fun in the sun with family and friends, join the Scottsdale Charos and hit a home run for our community. Spring training at Scottsdale Stadium. It's gonna be big. To join the fun, visit springtraining.com. <laughs> we were talking off camera um, how fun it is that you guys have these fundraisers where you're like bringing families together, it's wholesome activities, but everyone that contributes knows that at the end of the day it's going to benefit someone else. How great is that? It's awesome. It is really fun. You know, one of the neat things about being associated with the Char organization is really working side by side with a lot of really great people serving the same mission to go out and try to help others within the community and um, gives you a feeling of being on a team you know and um, doing something important um, that's selfless that's for others not necessarily something to help yourself or your own line of work um, it's really a, a really cool feeling Dr. Sieg, if someone wants to get involved or donate to to the Scottsdale Charles how can they do that well, we receive donations through the Charo Foundation, and an easy way to link up with the Charo Foundation is through our website, which is charos.com. C-H-A-R-R-O-S. That is awesome and easy and fun. I like it. Um, you're involved in this wonderful organization, and you've been with them for many years. Um, you guys go out there and you do all of these things, and it's not like you're you know, getting material gain from it. Um, what is it, why is it that you do it, and what is it that you want maybe a younger generation to know about service? Um, you know, you get to meet a lot of really interesting people along the way when you contribute to various organizations. Um, and you get the opportunity to really feel good about what you're doing. Um, and I think that's just a really great combination. Um, you know, we all get the opportunity in our lives to really step up and help somebody else. You never know when that's going to happen. Um, but I will say that when you do get the opportunity and you do take action to do that, on the back side of that are really some great, great opportunities for growth, learning, and good feelings about it. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's wonderful to do that. And I would encourage all our young people to get engaged in different things that help our community. So. What do you want people to remember you as? An artichoke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I would have to say I, I hope that people uh, uh, remember all of us, Charles, for the good things that we do within the community. And, and I think that uh, uh, being quiet about it and being kind of behind the scenes 
is a wonderful way to do it. Um, so uh, you can get a lot of things done when you're not having to, uh, um, you know, put on a show. Just go out and get it done. It's kind of our motto. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve, for being with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here at Saguaro Spotlight with us. That was a, I was say we that. could do that one again. Because <laughs> I want to see. Another edition of Saguaro Spotlight interviewed Larry and Chris Group from Scottsdale Microneedling. By using tiny needles on the face, this minimally invasive technique activates the synthesis of collagen. It's a new aesthetic procedure to improve skin conditions such as scarring, skin discoloration, and signs of aging. The guests have improved this method with a new invention. Watch with me now as we learn more about microneedling, which promises to be the future of skin beautification and rejuvenation. Hello and welcome to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm Sydney Rooks and I'm here today with Larry and Chris Group. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. They're here to talk to us about microneedling. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Um, so my first question, what exactly is microneedling? Well, microneedling is an aesthetic procedure to help make the skin look better either um, through evening out the skin tone or perhaps making it look younger or making it look healthier. And when it first burst onto the scene was a few years ago with Kim Kardashian putting up um, a post on her Instagram <laughs> with basically a face that looked like it had blood, blood all over it. it. <laughs> um, that's kind of an extreme version of microneedling, but um, they did use a microneedling device to do that actual treatment. Um, so what skin conditions can benefit from microneedling? You know, as Chris mentioned, things like complexion issues, there's, there's uh, folks that have things like melasma um, or scarring, acne scarring, uh, let's say surgical scars, or say you got an accident and got a scar. Um, in many cases, microneedling can be very effective in minimizing the appearance of those things. Uh, to some extent, stretch marks, but not as much as those other things. But we have other modalities that treat these things out there, but what makes microneedling so unique is the fact that because we don't use heat, we're able to use this device on folks with a darker skin color uh, without having no fear of hyperpigmentation or burning them. So this allows us to really open up these treatments to a, a wider range of clients and really do so uh, safely with, and still get excellent results. And that seems like it would be very important to get really good results without hurting anybody. Um, so what is the Skin Stylus microneedling system and how is it different from other microneedling systems? Well, when microneedling first started, um, it was done with roller, so a little device that had a roller on it and it was done mechanically. Um, what we've done with the skin stylus, this is an automatic microneedling device, so it's much easier to use. You can get into smaller areas, and Larry's going to tell you a little bit more about what makes skin stylus so unique. You know, what's interesting about this particular system is that the other systems may look similar, but when we engineered this, Chris and I developed this over the last uh, three or four years of, of engineering, is that while all systems have a disposable cartridge, what makes the skin stylus unique is the ability for it to be autoclave sterilized. And why that's a big deal is this idea of cross-contamination between patients. The other devices, while you can still change the cartridge out, you have no way of cleaning the device itself. Mm. And so therefore, uh, whatever the person before you has, you may have a, a, <laughs> the chance of having that uh, come in contact with you. Right. We felt that cross-contamination issue was significant enough to spend a lot of time, energy, and money in developing the new skin stylus system. And this removable, autoclavable nose comb solves that issue. So in addition to this brand new cartridge called the BioLock cartridge we invented, a uh, BioLock keeps liquids and contaminants from even getting into the device itself through a series of mazes mm -hmm. and absorbent membranes which traps everything inside the cartridge. But were liquid to make it through the cartridge into, into the device, the nose cone itself would be removed and sterilized. So what would happen is after every treatment, the practitioner would remove the nose cone and put a new sterile one on that. And what we'd be starting out with is, is a sterile device every time. This client safety issue to us is, is the most paramount thing that, um, that we, we feel is most important to uh, this system, but also the results themselves have worked out really well. So we can do things safely and effectively. 
safe and effective, always the best thing. Um, so will you stay with us? We have a couple more questions after our break. So we'll be right back with the groups. Welcome back to Saguaro Spotlight. I'm your host, Sydney Rooks, and we are back with Larry and Chris Group. Um, so we talked about the skin stylus before the break. Um, what is the air stylus and how does that benefit your patients? Well, at Scottsdale Microneedling, we have taken the time and the effort to come up with what is the best protocol for our clients. And what we found is when we created these micro channels with the skin stylus, it allowed us an opportunity to use those micro channels to blow products from our esthetical product line through those micro channels. And how we do it is with the air stylus. So what we have is an ambient air pressure device. We put our esthetical's serum in here and then when we create the micro channels with the skin stylus, we use this to blow the products through the micro channels. What this does for our client is it makes the treatment much more comfortable, very um, soothing. It helps to take down redness of the skin, but we also get a better result from the treatment when we can use the esthetical products in this and push it through the micro channels that we create with the skin stylus. So we actually have some footage of you performing um, this on one of your clients. Can uh, you walk us through this? Sure. This is one of my clients and she presented with um, hormonal pigmentation, which is melasma. Um, and also she's starting to age, so we have some age management issues. So we use our esthetical product line to put on the skin and then we use the skin stylus to push those products into the epidermis or um, into the dermis depending on what we're trying to treat. And then we also use the air stylus to push our um, HACU serum, which is hyaluronic acid, through those microchannels that we just created. Again, it's wonderful for the client to feel their skin co cooling down um, and it benefits the treatments. And here we're showing for the practitioner who's interested in the system themselves, like a doctor looking to buy the system, the fact that there's two different power mechanisms or two different power systems, both corded and cordless, as well as having two devices and that, that's, that's significant. Here I'm showing where the, uh, as we spoke before, the BioLock cartridge really cuts down and eliminates cross-contamination because the device nose cone can be sterilized and you can see me removing the BioLock cartridge. Uh, and I'm kind of showing the fact that liquids can't just pass directly through the cartridge, they actually have to go through a maze and are absorbed as, as they're passing through the cartridge and trapped there. And as a redundant safety system, the cartridge itself seals off the motor unit, not allowing any contaminants to get in the motor. So this is a, one of many safety steps that are engineered to make sure cross-contamination is not an issue. In this part of the video, I'm kind of showing the practitioner who will be interested in buying the system what comes with the system, um, the different charging devices, the fact there's multiple nose cones. And I think another essential thing from a, from a client standpoint is, is when a practitioner purchases the skin stylus microneedling system, they're going to get a significant amount of training based on their own experience, research, and the experience of other doctors doing these procedures over many, many years. What's the best way to handle this? What's the best protocols? What's the best way to safely and effectively give results to the client? Um, and I think what's important about that is the fact that we get a, a significant, consistent result that we're able to use at, at, with our clients here at Scottsdale Microneedling. So this system really is revolutionary. No one has done something exactly like this. Definitely not, yeah. Yeah, it is the first and only autoclave sterilizable microneedling system that's ever been invented. And by the way, this is an FDA registered device and we have taken the step to work with the FDA to get it registered. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, for someone like me, this sounds amazing. So uh, how many sessions would a patient like myself need to actually see some results? Well, it's going to depend on what you don't like about your skin, <laughs> what I might think can be corrected, and how many times is it going to take to do that? You've got beautiful skin, um, you know, great even skin tone. You do have one little mark right here. It's probably from a chicken pox scar. It is. Um, <laughs> so, 
usually we're talking between four and six treatments, anywhere between four and six weeks apart, uh, apart unless we are doing scar revision and then there are going to be more treatments that are closer together. After we get through that first series, we usually do about one to two touch-up treatments a year. Um, but again, it's going to depend on what your skin is like. Everybody's different, so I can't say that you're going to come in and I'm going to give you 5.7 treatments right. um, at this interval. So we've really taken the approach from looking at the science of what conditions are we treating and what does the science say that how many times we should do it and what is um, the timing in between the treatments and then we use our esthetical products line and our air stylist and our skin stylist to help us achieve those treatments. I think one of the important things to point out is that at Scottsdale Microneedling and Laser Aesthetics, this is all medically supervised. We have doctors with many, many years of experience as well as Chris, her experience put together with uh, protocols that have been proven through peer-reviewed research to be really effective and safe for the client. So we're not winging it. We definitely have been doing this for many, many years. Both Chris and myself teach other practitioners and have taught in both uh, in this country and in other countries as well as have been published in many different magazines and, and both of us are in the process of writing a textbook on microneedling. So at Scottsdale Microneedling we have quite a bit of experience and what we're able to offer our patients is uh, exceptional results and in a first system that's really uh, really eliminates the cross-contamination issue. So uh, the, the treatments themselves are safe and effective. So personalization, safety, and then you also have all that science backing you up. Definitely, yeah. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for explaining this to me. I'm definitely a fan. <laughs> you may have a new patient. Um, if you're interested in finding out more information about microneedling and the Skin Stylist, visit their website at www.scottsdalemicroneedling.com. It's at the bottom of your screen. So I wanted to thank you, Chris and Larry, for coming on the show and um, giving this demonstration much. and telling us all about this. I'm Sydney Rooks, and we will see you next time on Soro Spotlight. Thank you for watching Best Take. I'm your host, Tiffany Rush. Tune in again for the next edition of Best Take, when you'll see more exciting film and television work from the students at Maricopa Community Colleges. <laughs>